Hi, um, this, I'm Emily. This is Lisa Reed, and um, I'm excited to talk to you about Get Speaking Gigs Now and um, your experience with writing and also speaking. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun to be here. Yeah, so I guess for those who um, aren't familiar with you, would you mind giving a bit of an introduction and also, like, I guess a bit of background on kind of your experience in uh, writing and speaking? Sure. So, well, I started Get Speaking Gigs Now, my company, back in 2017. I was already speaking. I was speaking for on behalf of another company, and I had started a speakers network in my local area in Southern California because I thought, you know, it'd be more fun to hang out with speakers, and that would be an easier way to get booked, right? Like, why don't we hang out with some speakers? <laughs> yeah. So, what I wasn't expecting was them to ask me ask me for help on how to get booked. Like that was always a question I would get because mm -hmm. I booked in my first year, 83 speaking engagements in my local area. Oh, wow. And then I just would keep doing it at like, yeah, I really averaged like 60, 70 a year for a long time. Okay. So yeah. it took me a while, but I finally realized, you know, that would be, I keep getting asked to help people. Mm -hmm. So why don't I just do that and help people? And that is how get speaking gigs now started. And we, you know, now have the international speaker network. Yeah. We've gone from local to international. Mm -hmm. And so did you start writing first or did you start speaking first or how did that kind of. I started speaking first. I call it ignorance on fire. Just, you know, going <laughs> like I, yeah. I was ready to go and I didn't need to be an author. I know sometimes people think they have to have one for the other or. <laughs> I think that's often just an excuse to not do that thing that we're a little bit scared about doing, whether it's writing a book or being a speaker, because both can be scary and vulnerable. But yeah, I had given probably 150 talks before I ever wrote a book. And I'll tell you why I wrote my first, <clears throat> well, excuse me, I didn't write the entire book. I wrote a chapter for a book, a compilation was my first entry point into authorship. And here's what motivated me. I would be asked to speak somewhere and mm -hmm. they'd book me and then they'd say, Oh, you can put your books out, bring your books and we can put them out on the table for you. And I would say, Oh, I don't have a book. Yeah. And Emily, I just got tired of hearing myself say that I was like, this is ridiculous. People assume that I'm an author and yet I don't have a book. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting story. I, I had had that experience a few times and finally I was getting frustrated and I remember really tuning into what were the thoughts I had about that? And it was like, oh, this is going to be so much work. I got to do this. I gotta, what would I write about? Like those kind of grumblings in my mind. And once I heard that, like it was happening, but I wasn't really aware that that was what was holding me back. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I heard myself say that because now I'm going to change it. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find someone. I will write a chapter in a book. Someone will just be like, I'm going to do all the work and you just need to write a chapter and then you'll be an author. I swear, Emily, two days later, I'm at my, the international speaker network, which was at that time, a different name, but a woman who had never been come to my meetings before stands up and she says, I'm I'm putting together compilation books. And I, if anyone wants to write a chapter, I'll do all the work. Oh, wow, that's, that's so great. <laughs> I was like, me yes. yes I'm raising my hand please come help me and so that what what I think is exciting for people who are becoming authors is that once you're an author you can't not be an author mm -hmm. yeah like you you are yeah and so that helped me have the courage to then write my own book on my own mm -hmm. which then now I, I wrote this the one I have now on get speaking gigs now quicker easier faster better you know Mm -hmm. And, and I knew a lot more going into it than I did the first time. Yeah. That's so great how that worked out though. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just right there. You got to grab it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think a lot of authors are kind of like, don't always realize the benefits of like speaking at events. And so you kind of shared a little bit that people kept asking you like, oh, like you can set your book out or like, where's your book? So how can authors kind of like use those speaking events to, um, their advantage when selling books or use their book to land more speaking gigs. 
Yeah, I think, uh, and there's two different strategies, yeah. right? Two different questions. So how do you use your book to land more speaking gigs? Well, A, just like anything you do, you want to update your social media, mm -hmm. all the all the bios of the about yeah. pages, um, uh, you know, like if you can if you say it as a award or a thing that you did accomplishment, you want to mm -hmm. put that in any of the any of the programs that allow you to do that. You also want to, you may want to add author to your mm -hmm. byline. I mean, I recommend that. Yeah. You may also want to add it. You need to add it in your bio. And there's something called a speaker sheet, mm -hmm. the speaker world. So you'll want to add that image of your book on your speaker sheet to give you that extra credibility. You could also add it in your signature, you know, your mm -hmm. email signature. So there's all a bunch of different ways that you can let people know that you have that. Mm -hmm. But it just gives you credibility, instant cre When you're an author, you get kind of that instant credibility as a speaker. So you don't have to work that hard, mm -hmm. as hard, I should say, to build the authority. So that's that's how you use your book to gain more speaking engagements mm -hmm. because it just gives that instant authority. Mm -hmm. How do you sell more books using speaking? Well, it really, this is where it depends on your strategy and what is it that you're trying to do? Mm -hmm. Are you actually trying to sell more books or are you trying to gain clients? Mm -hmm. So here's where you can start to decide. Do I want to put the focus on selling the book or do I want to give books away or give them as prizes or mention that I have a book because then you get the authority while you're speaking, but then that allows people to trust you a little quicker. It also allows you to, um, they, certain people want to get to know you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. They want to do a little more research or uh, maybe they're not ready to step in as a client, but they're like, well, I like what that person's saying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get their book. Yeah. So you want to create different ways for people to get a, get in touch with you, get to yeah. know you better. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. And I guess kind of going off of that, are there any certain resources you suggest that authors use to kind of um, like attract clients or like organizers to land speaking gigs or I know you talked a little bit about um, the speaker sheet being helpful yeah you know that is one of the steps in the process but I think the first step that I typically say is you want to do what I call get your talk ready to rock you want to make sure that your talk is dialed in it can pass the grocery store test meaning like yeah. someone is in line behind you buying a pack of gum and they, you get to chatting and yeah. they ask you about your, <laughs> what do you do? And you say, I'm a speaker or I'm an author. You yeah. want to be able to say that title of the book mm -hmm. and, or of the talk right away without mm -hmm. having to look it up. Right. Yeah. So you want to have that confidence and that alone is so huge because a lot of times I work with people who have been quote unquote, working on their talk for a long time and it's still in their head. And I'm yeah. like, we got to get that out. We got to create it, like yeah. give it life. And mm -hmm. so I think that's a big, important step, just like putting that stake in the ground, mm -hmm. because then you're starting to get ready to, to reveal, you know, mm -hmm. I am a speaker. As soon as you say you're a speaker, people are going to, the very next question, right? Emily is, oh, what do you speak about? Like, yeah. so you, you need to have the answer. It's same yeah. as being an author, like, oh, what's your book about? What's the title of your book? So you need to be ready. I always say, yeah. got to be ready to be ready. So the talk is, is the piece that you're creating first, but it's also created with intention, mm -hmm. meaning like, who is it going to be for? Like, who are your people? Where are they? Who, what audiences is mm -hmm. this is going to be relevant to? And which is probably the same audience for your book, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, where yeah. are they hanging out? And that gives you direction because the good news is there's an abundance of speaking opportunities. Mm -hmm. The bad news is there's an abundance of speaking opportunities because yeah. you need to like, you don't need to speak every single place. You're not a fit for every single place. Mm -hmm. When you fine tune where you're a fit for, whew, then it's a win-win for everyone. You mm -hmm. win because you're getting to speak about your expertise. The audience wins because they're like, oh my gosh, this was great. I really needed the solutions to these problems. <laughs> yeah. And same for your book, like you're, you're advertising or you're marketing to the right people. So everyone wins. Yeah, no. And I think that's definitely part of the process of like being an author as well as finding your audience and realizing that you don't need to market to everyone. I think that's no. such an important step because if you market to everyone, then it's really hard to find the people who actually need to hear what you're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you put that stake in the ground, whether it's your book or your talk or both, Mm -hmm. that's a very important place to be. Like there's tons of people who help speakers 
or people become speakers, but I have a very certain, I have a niche. Mm -hmm. I like to help heart centered speakers, coaches, consultants, people who have some, like a thousand dollar or more offer yeah. service product market their business because marketing and sales is part of being an entrepreneur, but we don't all love that. So yeah. if you're like teaching, if you're, if you're like, gosh, I really want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's who I work with. Yeah. If you're just like in it for the, you know, I just want to be a super duper famous and speak yeah. to billions of people because I want fame and like, that's not really my yeah. focus. It doesn't mean that's not going to happen, but I'm really more like heart centered, yeah. purpose driven, soul filling people who are like, how can I have a strategy that's not yeah. sucking the life out of my soul, but actually yeah. filling my soul. Yeah, no. And I think that's really great to help people who are, like you said, especially because I feel like so many people, especially authors are sometimes more like introverted and not sure how to like transition to those speaking gigs, which can be really helpful and can also be enjoyable. <laughs> so. Absolutely. When, when we shift from, that's such a great point. When we shift from being a speaker to thinking of being a teacher. Mm -hmm. Like if you've written a book, right? If you have enough knowledge in your mind to write a book, you have something to say. Yeah. You know, whether it's, I mean, you've said it on the page mm -hmm. or you're saying it verbally, right? And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I could teach people about this thing. Mm -hmm. I know this inside and out. Yeah. And how, when you think about how many people it could actually help and serve, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's not about us and it's not about our insecurities or our fears or, oh my gosh, I'm shy or mm -hmm. the fear that we got planted in us when we were kids about mm -hmm. public speaking, that can start to dissipate. Mm -hmm. And we can come from that place of like, I'm here to serve, I'm here to serve these other folks who could use the solutions that I've created. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess kind of going off that, are there certain um, like misconceptions that you see authors sometimes have about speaking? Oh yeah. I, I think well, if we're talking just specifically with authors, I think one of the misconceptions is using it to sell your books, which I know that sounds weird. I'm going to yeah. be like, I'm going to be controversial here <laughs> because I think they, I mean, unless you're like JK Rowling, okay. Yeah. Like that's, if you're selling your book at, let's just say 15, 20 bucks, mm -hmm. right. Or 10 bucks, you know, 10 to $20. Yeah. You guys sell a lot of books. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you have a program that's a thousand dollars for, you know, or more, mm -hmm. well, that's, and then you give them the book for free. Like, so you can yeah. use it as a leveraging point, mm -hmm. use it as a way to introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, and smartly, I'm not just saying just to hand out books yeah. willy nilly. I don't mean it that way, mm -hmm. but I think sometimes people don't realize the strap, like what's the actual point Yeah, and figuring out what is your actual strategy that's going to help you mm -hmm. get what you really need for your business. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. And that I think, yeah. Yeah. Another one I would say is that I think a lot of times people think they need something uh, like that they don't have meaning, mm -hmm. um, like I happen to have a bachelor's and master's degree in speech communication. Okay. But that was when I was in college. That yeah. was uh, when I was, you know, in the teens and early, early, early twenties. Mm -hmm. And you do not need certain degrees in order to be a speaker. Mm -hmm. You just need an idea that's valuable, like to, that's going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to ask and set yourself up to ask and be ready to speak. So mm -hmm. anybody could do it. It, it says, a level playing field here, but you have to step into that. So mm -hmm. I think sometimes people are like wondering when am I going to be ready? There's no letter going in the mail. You're not going to receive a letter that says <laughs> you are now eligible. Yeah, <laughs> like, <you're ready. laughs> you can crown yourself eligible like today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's important in that like you might not ever feel hundred percent ready, but that doesn't mean that you don't have something valuable to say or that Yes. Yeah. And so do you typically recommend, and I guess it's kind of depends on who you work with, but are a lot of the clients you work with kind of using their speaking to um, bring clients to their programs typically? Yeah, typically, because it's a way to market your business without having to do things that maybe just don't feel yummy, mm -hmm. you know, um, especially with the heart centered people. I think 
-hmm. a lot of us are very into teaching, into serving, Mm -hmm. into giving, and it just feels good. And sometimes when we get in that marketing and sales role, I think people miss the mark. Uh, Heart-centered folks tend to miss the mark because they don't feel good doing it Mm -hmm. or it feels uh, inauthentic or just Mm -hmm. feels like a grind or something like that. So I think it's important to have that space and as an entrepreneur to think, or an author, like what would feel really good to me? Like, yeah. actually, I would love to like hang around some like-minded folks and mm-hmm. really give pour into them. Yeah. And gosh, if that helps my business too, wow, like yeah. what a concept. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So to me, it's one of the funnest ways and you don't have to be an extrovert, a rock mm-hmm. star, a, you know, jazz hands. You don't have to be that way. In fact, introverts make incredible speakers mm-hmm. because you just, stand there in your knowledge and you you get to serve and give and it's just a beautiful thing yeah and I think that's a really good mindset to go into it like you said focusing on teaching and serving others especially if you're someone who maybe you grew up and were kind of nervous about public speaking because I think that when you approach it that way you're not so much focused on just like oh like am I going to say the wrong thing or that and more like what you can give to other people yeah yeah. And I, I mean, I, it's a real thing. I, I understand people have a lot of hangups about speaking. It's typically something from way, way, way back in childhood. There's, I would say that's a hotbed for humiliation. You know, we have all these different opportunities to be embarrassed and uh, shrink and mm-hmm. be told to not say what we need and be quieted as children. And that could come from the household or school or friends or whatever, right? There's so many, so many opportunities. Yeah. Um, when we start to realize, oh, that's not me anymore. Like I'm an adult. I mm. I can yeah. I can speak what I need to speak. I can say yeah. I have the permission to do <laughs> this thing. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, yeah, maybe I'm not afraid of it anymore. Maybe there's another possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And is there anything else that you think kind of writers or authors or just people who are maybe thinking about um, speaking gigs should know about it? I think if you were waiting for a sign, this is it. If you were (laughs) like, oh my gosh, I need to do that one of these days. Well, here's your lucky chance. You know, it's never (laughs) too late to start. I've had clients in their seventies who are like, I've been dreaming about this for most of my life. I really want to do this. So it's never too late. Mm-hmm. Especially now we've got virtual opportunities. We've got so many ways that you can get your message out there. Mm-hmm. So do it, you know? Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And where can everyone find you if they want to connect with you or talk about um, speaking gigs or things like that? Uh, yeah, super. Actually, I'll give everyone a gift at getspeakinggigsnow.com slash tips. Okay. Uh, like, um, cause I'm going to give you five top tips to get more speaking gigs. You can just go there, get, get speaking gigs now.com slash tips. And you'll get five top tips to get more speaking gigs. If you want to reply to that, any of those tips, you can send me an email right from there mm-hmm. and you'll get a whole bunch of goodies. So awesome. Thank take you. advantage. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make sure to share that in the um, link with everyone, but yeah, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.